Okay. So the following is a thermal shock uh, test, Ooh. Uh, just to kind of explain what's going on with the effect. This is 2.1 beta 4 engineers, and I am in a heavily modded Python. A quick overview of the stats includes uh, shield resistances at 523 megajoules with negative 1.1% uh, thermal resistance. 49.5% positive kinetic resistance. Explosive is at positive 58.3. The armor is sitting at 2,454 points. It is mirrored, and the mirrored mod is uh, modified. Thermal resistance on my armor is a total of 103.9%. That includes 56.5 from the mirrored, and then three whole reinforcement modules that provide 16.6 .6 positive, 15.3, and 15.5 positive. We have a kinetic module at uh, a kinetic resistance of positive 1.3%, so I've kind of sacrificed in that regards quite, quite heavily. Um, and then I have, uh, that's negative 51.8 on the uh, mirrored armor, positive 15.6, positive 22, and positive 15.5 on the actual hull reinforcements. The explosive resistance on the armor is 15.8% positive with negative uh, 30.6 from the mirrored, and then the HRP is at 15.6 positive, 15.3, and 15.5 positive. Um, as you can imagine, uh, quite, quite the tank, Lots and lots and lots of tank. I specifically built the thermal resistance to counter the thermal shock build. And this is me not doing any resistance. And within two seconds, three seconds there, we're over 200% heat. And we're firing heat sinks. So two heat sinks kind of started to counter it. But if you look here, most of our modules are completely, completely malfunctioning already. Now, this is this is with 103% thermal resistance that that I'm maintaining these heat levels, and I'm not engaging the target at all. Now, I do want to point out that. Uh, his targets, his weapons is burst laser, burst laser, burst laser, burst laser, burst laser, and two multi cannons. All of his weapons on this Federal Corvette are modded with thermal shock, so there is a significant amount of heat buildup going very, very quickly. So on the next run, I'm actually going to come out and I'm going to engage him, and you're going to see the difference between a target that uh, simply doesn't fight back in the sheer amount of effectiveness, and just look at that, I can't see anything at all. Just, just ridiculous. So, so that's, that is the effect of 103.9% thermal resistance on hull versus thermal shock. So as you can imagine, it seems to be that there is absolutely no benefit towards maxing your thermal resistance, which is significantly disappointing uh, when you look at it. So this time I'm going to go ahead and I am going to engage him in an actual fight. And this time I'm, I'm going to use all of my equipment and abilities to my fullest capability. And just as a reminder, my weapons loadout consists of two regenerative beam turrets, because I prefer to support my allies, uh, two medium uh, torpedo launchers, both of which are modified specifically to uh, knock out the... i got to set my audio to my headset here real quick. Uh, both of which are specifically modified to take out the shields, uh, shield generator of a ship. Uh, simply because the Fertilance uh, is so quick and powerful now. Uh, 
Uh, and it's getting like 3,000 megajoules plus in shields and, and a lot of builds. Um, so simply because of that, I, I feel like I have no other option than to directly attack the shield generator uh, against a lot of ships. Um, so basically, yeah, that's, that's a big, big thing that I kind of have to build, um, my ships for, which, which is kind of, uh, a little disheartening. There doesn't seem to be any real counter to FDLs unless you're actually directly taking their shield down. <laughs> All right, so waiting for him to come out. And then we'll do an actual fight with me defending myself. I'm going to be as aggressive as I can trying to get the drop on him. Um, and that means I'm going to actually kind of cheat here. And hit him with those torps as quickly as possible. I'll try to take down that shield generator. However, it's worth noting that the first time I actually fought uh, Commander Zayak Baltimore, um, a Anaconda followed us down, uh, actually trying to kill him, and his point the point defenses on the Anaconda actually destroyed my torpedoes that were trying to kill Zayak, despite the fact that that Anaconda was also trying to kill the same person. So the point defenses are inadvertently defending uh, people that they shouldn't be. Uh, which is uh, kind of broken. All right, so I'm gonna start this fight here. All right, so I have popped his shield with a total of four torpedoes. Oops, shit, I didn't mean to track those. Okay, so right off the bat, I pop two heat sinks, and before the heat sinks are actually available, I am back at 100% heat. So. That's two heat sink launchers, which compels me to want to put four on instead of having four point defense. Um, my power plant is destroyed. So, of course, I use power priorities. Tell them to stop. I'm just gonna try and flee. Okay, so I've I've managed to get a uh, three percent uh, range, or I'm sorry, three kilometer range, three and a half now. I'm still getting shot. Now, the only reason that I am surviving right now is because I understand the 20, 40, 50 rule on power plant and I have my priorities set uh, accordingly. Okay, so I am going to go through here and just just look at, at the carnage that this has, has done to my ship. Front. Landing gear deployed. All right. 
right, so we'll go ahead and just go through our repairs menu to show this. So 97,428 credits to repair all of it, but that's uh, not accurate because we're on beta prices. So frameshift drive is at 0%, power plant is at 0%, cargo hatch is at 0%, heat sink, heat sink, point defense, point defense. So basically everything external is completely fried. Uh, all of these things aren't able to, the cargo hatch and heat sinks, point defense, they're not able to be modified, uh, which with the heat effects, it almost calls for these things to be able to be modifi modified. Uh, my discovery scanners, 21%, my hulls, 35 my weapons, uh, my advanced plaza, 57%. Now this is... Target destroyed. Uh, you know, it's just, just insane. Now, and, and if you really stop and look at that fight, that was that was only a few seconds, and it didn't take that long for him to pull my shields down. Uh, and that's that's mostly due to the fact that I don't use shield cell banks because if if I do wind up against a thermal shock opponent, they're they're completely useless. Um, there's too many things to counter them uh, for me to justify putting them on my ships. Um, But yeah, my my build consists of the, the APA to, to remove locks as well. But in that particular situation, my only option was to try and evade his fire, which means the fixed weapons can't really be brought to bear. Um, all right, so basically, in a nutshell, I really, really, really feel like significantly, significantly overpowered on Thermal Shock. And it's not that I think that this should not be a thing. Uh, I think Thermal Shock is a very interesting mechanic and it should be left in the game. However, right now it's an all-purpose uh, weapon. And, and kind of to quote Sandro, and, and Sandro, I kind of apologize for, for throwing this back in at you, but when it comes to this, you have a weapon that has now become a all-purpose strategy as opposed to a actual uh, tactic. It's, it's no longer... You know, it's not a weapon that is suitable for only certain circumstances. My feedback on the thermal shock would be to do a couple different things to it. Uh, primarily, the first thing would be to go in and actually uh, not allow thermal shock to impart heat on the target ship until the shields are down. Um, the reason that I feel that way is there's no actual impact to the ship occurring with the shields up. So... How can you justify heat transferring from the shield to the ship? Because there's that space between it. It doesn't make sense. There's no air uh, or anything between it in order to transfer that heat. If you want to use the shield generator uh, particle fields or whatever you know that field is as an excuse for that heat transferring to the ship, then what I suggest needs to be done is that the thermal shock should deal damage directly to the shield generator first before it starts imparting heat to the target. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because at this point, you know, while my shields are still up, I, I'm not getting any benefit from them against the thermal shock user. It doesn't matter because I'm immediately overheating. Uh, you look, look at how quickly that occurred in this video. It's, it's significantly, significantly... Uh, just seriously unbalanced. And I understand that uh, this particular uh, set of modifications, like engineers in general, is supposed to throw a wrench in the balance mechanics and make things significantly more uh, versatile, customizable, etc. But in its current state, Thermal Shock is the best mod to run because there's no direct counter to it. Uh, you saw my heat sink started jettisoning there, so I started losing uh, actual heat sink launchers. 
Uh, that particular fight where I was actually fighting back against him in the first time, where I wasn't generating any of my own heat and I was just letting him attack me, uh, I didn't actually lose a lot of heat sink launchers. That was actually a really good, high, uh, highly beneficial uh, set of malfunctions that occurred to me. Like, that was a, a good engagement uh, against a thermal shock user. Uh, typically, the first time I fought him, within the first few seconds, almost all of my heat sinks were completely jettisoned through malfunctions because of how quickly I was malfunctioning. Because the first thing that I did uh, was I started engaging him and I didn't preemptively pop any heat sinks because of the fact that I didn't realize he had thermal shock. So when that initial salvo hit me because I hadn't preemptively cooled my ship, it immediately threw me up into massive heat levels absolutely massive heat levels i'm actually really surprised that i survived that that particular run there um so basically i i can't begin to i can't say it enough thermal shock seriously needs some balance and again possible solutions and i know that i don't have the best solutions for game balance but things to get the developers minds turning is don't allow the heat to pass through active shield. Uh, don't, if you do allow the heat to pass through an active shield, make it target the actual shield generator first before it moves to the hull um, and starts heating it. Because that heat transfer, there's, there needs to be some kind of counter. It needs to have a niche. That niche needs to be on unshielded ships, in my personal opinion. Because right now, it works perfectly against everything. There's there's no real counter other than massive amounts of heat sinks. Uh, and, and lastly, the thermal resistance needs to protect against thermal shock. And the same should be for any other relevant bonuses to weapons or special effects that happen to categorize any added effect damage or whatever the effect is, should have uh, protection granted against that effect from whatever resistance that effect qualifies under. Um, obviously, again, reiterating, 103.9% thermal resistance on my ship's hull. And I'm still cooking. Still cooking. So please, Frontier, like, like I said, if you guys don't fix this, what's going to happen is the players that are actively going and and indiscriminately killing others, whether it is for uh, political reasons or what have you, um, or even just non-casuals versus casuals, the people that are, are running these are going to have a massive advantage. And I do want to just kind of throw out there that, that this ship's build, I have put in uh, roughly about 385 modification rolls into this ship specifically to get it as maxed as possible and when you stop and think about the fact that even with my ship being maxed out with 385 uh, uh, engineers modification rolls and if you do a quick calculation on that and just assume uh, four tons of resources per roll you're looking at 1540 uh, units of resources minimum being used to put my ship in the state that it's at and if you translate that to game hours that's an insane amount of time for absolutely no benefit so clearly we have a problem because thermal shock is available right off the bat whereas in order to get the level of modification that i have not only do you have to get access to all the correct engineers and live but you also have to gain all of those resources in massive amounts of time and yet still no actual benefit against a weapon like thermal shock so please take that into account and thank you for watching <laughs>